David, welcome to the program. Nice to have you with us. Hey, good morning, Sean. Technology, huh? Yeah, well, that's right. That's the way it goes. That's our infrastructure. Um, David, I was surprised to see you and others advocating for the end of the office, the official office in Parliament, of the Leader of the Opposition. And I suddenly thought after I read my headlines at uh, 7 o'clock this morning that you weren't calling for, like, the end of Chris Luxon or to put him in the ground or in the sea <laughs> or anything. Um, but for the end of that title, and we have traditionally always had a Leader of the Opposition, and that person has been the leader or the parliamentary leader of the biggest party other than the party in government in Parliament. What's wrong with that? Isn't it good to have a leader of the opposition? Uh, well, it's good that each party has a leader, and, and so they should, um, because then you've got someone that's accountable and, and can speak for that party, uh, so that if you give your party vote to a party, you, you know which one you've, you've spoken for. Yeah. Um, I, ha I have to say... Just so people are aware, um, this is not the ACT Party's biggest priority or issue no, right now. No, I get now. that. Um, and I was a bit surprised I got interviewed about it, but let's talk about it. So let me give you an example. Um, I was uh, invited to a, a public event recently, um, and they said, look, um, we we won't have you speak uh, or anyone else. We'll just have the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition. Oh. And I said, well, hang on a minute. Um, out of the people, the people who voted for this government, okay, well, well you know, the Labor and the Greens, they agreed to be um, part of the government. So I guess the Prime Minister, you can speak say, for them. on their behalf. Um, but actually, there's a whole lot of people that voted for ACT who don't like the government, but also they consciously decided they didn't want to vote for National Labor. So the current arrangement, uh, the way it's set up, is that whoever's the leader of the National Party at, at any given time, uh, is speaking for you, whether you voted for them or not. Uh, and that is the opposite of democracy. The whole point of our system is that each person, doesn't matter who you are, you have that equal right. That's what democracy really means. Everyone gets an equal say. Uh, and the, the, whole, the whole concept of a leader of the opposition, if there's more than one party, is really saying that if you vote for the biggest party, your vote counts. If you vote for anyone else, it doesn't. Uh, and that's just not true. It's not true when you form a government. Uh, when you form a government, it very much matters who's in the coalition. Uh, so why should you have this assumption that whether you agree to it or not, uh, another party's leader is speaking for your voters? Yeah. So he does, So uh, I guess let's sum that up. And you've taken, why use two words when you can use 20, David? Um, you're an opposition party, but in real terms... Christopher Luxon doesn't lead you, so he shouldn't be described as the leader of the opposition. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. that's why you got. So, that's why you're such a a, a world renowned uh, radio host. <laughs> uh, it's your ability okay. to cut to the chase and sum it up. Yeah. David, does any money come with the position or any actual official recognition? Because I know maybe speaking times in the house and stuff might be affected by by this this title. No, it's a, it's a real mishmash. So um, in terms of, of money, I think you do get paid a bit more and you get access to a limousine. I mean, that, that stuff, we don't really care. I mean, if, if they if they said the leader of the largest non-government party got that, we, we wouldn't care as long as we're not saying that they're speaking for every other party. Yeah. Uh, you know, in terms of how much uh, staff and officers and and funding uh, parties get in the, in the parliamentary cycle year... Um, that's that's proportional to the number of people you get elected, so right. that's not really affected. Um, and in terms of, of how much you get paid, that that doesn't really change a lot. Um, so you, you know that that stuff's not so important. Yeah. But what is important is just this idea of if you vote for a party, uh, do you get some other party's leader theoretically so speaking for you or speaking on their behalf? All right, David. So who's with you on this? Well, it's a funny old thing. Uh, I was talking to James Shaw uh, yesterday, which is not a frequent occurrence, but uh, he's an interesting guy. And um, you know, James said, look, we've, we've said this for years. So they, they agree, the Greens do. The Greens? Uh, surprisingly, yeah. Labor and National think the way it is is just fine. Because <laughs> they're the only people who get the job. Because they assume, because they assume that... 
uh, you, you know, if they're not um, in government, then they'll be the leader of the opposition, and uh, it's a job for them. So, you know, it's a funny old business, but at the end of the day, um, you know... You so you've got the Greens to party Māori with you? Uh, look, that that would involve having to talk to them, and frankly, the way they're behaving, I, I really can't see that. Um, hang, on, but, hang, hang on. Uh, do you find them impossible to talk or dialogue with in Parliament? Uh, not impossible, but, I mean, they're just so tiresome. It's like dealing with kids. Well, OK, I might come, might come back to that. OK, so the Greens and you want to get rid of this. OK, how do you progress the idea? Because I've got to say, uh, I, I don't disagree with it. I think many New Zealanders would say it's, it's kind of silly in an MMP in a, a diverse parliament. Um, so how do you progress this now? Well, I... Though I, it's not your policy the, priority and you've said that. Yeah, yeah. Look, the Standing Orders Committee, so every three years there's what's called the Standing Orders Committee meets with representatives of, of each party um, and it's proportional to parliament. So uh, Labor and National will have a, a bigger number of members on that committee uh, and then it kind of has to come to a consensus so uh, i'm sure that brooke uh, van belden who's our deputy and also our whip uh, will, will make the argument mm. uh, and i'm sure that the greens will and um, who knows i mean we might they might just be able to embarrass labor and national uh, into changing their mind uh, but i suspect they will say look we you know we, we don't like the idea that we are gradually moving to a truly multi-party system uh, and I think that is happening after 25 years of MMP uh, you know we, we're going to end up with a, a structure of parties more like they have in Europe if you get proportional mm. representation eventually you get multiple parties not just two uh, and um, but I, th I think it's more likely Labour and National will resist but hey look we got other ideas you know we've said for example uh, that the parties the parliament should sit for four days a week um, but sit for one quarter less weeks and mm. why is that because uh, there'd be one quarter less flights from wherever MPs live to Wellington mm. and um, we think that's a good idea for the simple reason that um, every MP says that they want to do something about climate change well here's something they could do uh, I've been proposing this for three years and they won't even do that. So they're busy flying to Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt. Uh, they're, they're very happy to fly in and out of Wellington for three days at a time. Uh, Act has given these MPs a very simple proposition. Sit for four days a week, sit for fewer weeks, save the planet, uh, but they won't do it. Yeah. I uh, don't disagree with you on that, David. David, I want to get uh, back to your comments about the part that Maori, the Maori Party, but more specifically an interview you took part in recently with state-funded... Māori television, um, and a woman called uh, Moana, who I know, um, who fancies herself an interviewer and a journalist. She is better as an interviewer and journalist than, than I am as a singer and performer, which is her primary profession. But it's an interview that has um, generated a fair bit of interest uh, 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 on the internet and uh, I guess divided or polarised interest. Some people say she owned you in the common parlance Others say you stood your ground against a very hostile interview that seemed to be throwing accusations of racism against you. What did you make of that encounter? Well, one thing that you may not be aware of is that there was actually 90 minutes of filming. Um, so, you know, they really, I think it would be fair to say she had a pretty tough time uh, and they had to edit it from 90 minutes down to 15 to, to get what they did. Uh, and, um, you know, I don't know who's... Was that 15 that minutes, to your mind, David, a fair representation of the 90 minutes? Uh, well, to be honest, I haven't watched it because I was there. Um, but <laughs> all, the, all, the feed, all the feedback, um, and I don't really care how they're editing it, I just enjoyed the debate. But, yeah. um, you know, all the feedback I'm getting, uh, the amount of people that have joined and given money to Max uh, in the last two or three days, uh, and the amount of uh, messages I've had, um, I, I think it, I think it's fair to say it was a success for us. Um, if anyone's thinking that she did a good job of that, um, wow, that, that's some interesting thinking, uh, which I'll, I'll have to have to get into sometime. Oh well, no, apparently she owned you, and and you know she showed you what for, which is never the point really. 
of anything but ah, the most hostile, well, I, hostile interviews. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen that. But maybe, I, maybe I don't. Okay, hang out the wouldn't same it be room useful room. for us if they played the whole ninety minutes unedited? I'd, I'd love I to mean, I might not. My life's too short, David, but I'm sure other people would be interested. Yeah, well, they they should just release the uncut version, but um, I think we both know that's very unlikely. All right, um, and I guess you're saying I'm not even going to go back and watch the 15 minute cut. I've got more to get on with. Well, uh, maybe maybe we get through the week. Might look at it on the weekend, but um, no, I <laughs> I don't I don't often watch myself. Um, yeah. You know, it's more about. Uh, hearing what other people yeah. are saying because if you're watching yourself, you've got a bit of a problem. And finally, David, I know you were briefed on this, but we have um, the College of Midwives on later, um, later in the morning. And I just thought it might be interesting to get your perspective on the fact that the woman mother uh, and woman, those words have been taken out entirely from the New Zealand Midwife's Guidebook. Do you, do you find that interesting? Um... I just don't know what to say about that. It, it shows uh, a level of insanity and inanity that even a couple of years ago would have been difficult to predict. Um, I, what really worries me about it is that it is an attack on language. Um, the whole point and definition of a woman is a, an adult human female, a, a female being um, the gender that does reproduction. This is very much what midwives are into, in case anyone's uh, missed it. In fact, the word midwife comes from the old English mid, meaning with, uh, uh, meaning, uh, sorry, with, and with uh, being the old English for woman. So it actually means with woman. That's what would midwife means. But yeah. don't tell them because they'll probably want to change. Mid people. Um, the mid that they'll want to, well, they'll want to be with, with people, I guess, con, con person perhaps. But so, so that's crazy, but um, it shows what a, an unusual world we live in where people have taken advantage of the goodwill of others. Um, the, the reality is that, you know, a woman is an adult human female who gives birth uh, or, may, or may do has the capacity to reproduce um, and, and people who give birth are mothers, right? That, well, that's right. A parent, a parent who's who's the parent of a child who's a female one is is, is, a, is a mother. Um, and I think the real problem here is that you've got a group of people who you know it, it feels some real anxiety, and that's true. But the, the thing is, rather than saying it's okay, women, the definition of a woman includes you. Uh, what we've instead decided is that we can't have the concept of a woman for anyone else uh, because some people are uncomfortable about it. And ironically, there's an intolerant strain or an intolerant attitude where we, we've said that a, a woman is so narrowly defined that there's a bunch of people who can't fit into it. So the concept of a woman must be destroyed. Um, and it's what would have been more tolerant and inclusive would be to say, actually, you know, you can be a woman uh, even if you don't have all of the classical characteristics of a woman. That would have been an enlightened and tolerant way forward, uh, but that's not the way we've gone. Can, can men be women, David? I don't know, Sean. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean... Well, I, what I do you say, mean you don't know? Well... Uh, we live in a we live in a world where it could be completely redefined tomorrow. I think I think that's how a lot of people feel. I think I think the answer to that is that if you have the um, you know, biological characteristics of a male and you're an adult human, then you're a man. Um, I, I guess what so. But what I'm saying is that some people who feel um, that the, the stereotype or the definition of a man. Uh, was was narrow and didn't include people that felt like they did. Uh, therefore, they had to become a woman instead. Uh, yeah. And then because those people have decided that they're a woman, uh, then the definition of a woman is someone who's you know, gen sexually, genetically female. Uh, that can't be allowed. So we've ended up destroying all language. You can't use either term um, because the terms were defined so narrowly. That okay, David, would you agree... Right? Personally, that a woman is an adult human female. Well, I do. Yeah, good on you. Hey, thanks for your time this morning.
That is, yeah, no problem, Sean. that is the leader of an opposition party, but not the leader of the opposition, the leader of the ACT party, David Seymour.